from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data SV 2016. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Hello everyone, welcome back to SiliconANGLE's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host. Peter Burris, our next guest is Rishi Yadav, who's the CEO of InfoOps. It's great to have on, because he's not only um, CEO of a, of, a, of a really awesome company, but he's also on the front lines. He's almost like an expert analyst to come on and share his thoughts on the industry, because he's so up in the front lines. Welcome back to the Cube, Cube alumni. Good to see you. Good to be back here on theCUBE. Yeah. Um, so last night we had an interesting event. You were at, the, at, the, at our event and um, you know, Peter was doing some new research and we were talking after. Um, the market is really robust right now with big data, but the Hadoop, Strata, O'Reilly show is not getting as much traction as, as we were saying. And I can see from the tweet stream that day one certainly got a pop, but really the engagement seems to be down a little bit. Is that a function of Hadoop or is that a function of the event? What's your thoughts? I think Strata has been the oldest show, so and I think the whole big data thing has kind of expanded or moved on. I mean, the big data has become a fast data. Uh, one thing which I noticed uh, in the show was that there are more mach companies about machine learning than anything else. I mean, two, three years back, uh, every other company was bil uh, building some kind of a database, right? SQL on Hadoop was a big deal, right? Now SQL on, on Hadoop is a standard. I mean, you need to have it. Yeah. Right. Uh, so uh, the theme which I see uh, on the ground is streaming, the real-time streaming, and I didn't see a lot of companies about that, but uh, the reason could be that the streaming has kind of become a standard now. But I saw a disproportionate, num disproportionate number of machine learning companies, which was uh, interesting to see. And you get the machine learning, and last night the Forrester analyst, I was on the panel with Peter Burris, was talking about we need algorithms to police the algorithms because you not, might not know what's going on. So there are some key technology enablers that are pretty uh, hot right now. You mentioned machine learning, but also the uh, business stories are big. So the, you know, he's seeing threads of I need more machine learning, some more under the hood uh, uh, advantages. When the Spark certainly is still got the got the momentum there. But then the conversation shifts as EMC's Bill Schmarzer was on, who talks to customers all the time. It's the outcomes again, back to outcomes. So you're seeing the thread between some really key stuff going on under the hood, and then the business outcomes as the kind of the core themes. What what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I mentioned machine learning. Anything else that you're watching with Spark? And, and what's the, what are some of the customer conversations that you're having? Yeah, so you're right. So I think it's uh, uh, become, uh, rather than technology, it has become more of the use case oriented. Uh, in fact, uh, most of the customers, when they talk to us, yes, Hadoop is there, Spark is there, Kafka is there. Uh, but most of the time when they come to us, they talk about the integration, right? So integration is the underlying theme, which is not, uh, which is always underrated here. I mean, nobody talks about integration, but most of the work which we are getting is about integ integrating different sources, whether it's IoT sources or an enterprise sources or uh, anything else. Well, let's talk about that because the the integration challenges on uh, conceptually sometimes seem very simple. And the industry's gotten really good at moving data around, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of challenges for still defining formats, defining the tooling, how much it's going to cost. How long is it going to take? So when you talk about integration, what are some of the new considerations that people have to factor into the decisions about what they do? Yeah, so the first thing about integration is, and going back to the Hadoop, and, and John, I'll get back to that, that why Hadoop itself is losing relevance. Uh, but uh, it started with all the unstructured data and, uh, and the stories around that. But most of the data uh, in enterprises is structured data. Right. So when you're integ integrating data, most of the sources you have are the structured uh, relational sources from where data is coming. Right. And they all had their own siloed approaches how to pull data from them. And now uh, with Kafka, for example, is doing pretty good. Kafka uh, has something called Kafka Connect, which came out a month back, right, in which you can ingest directly from the relational sources uh, using their JDBC connector. So connecting mostly with the relational sources is becoming the theme, and then the real-time streaming data, the event data, which is which is coming from multiple. And sources. those connectors, that's really talking about the integration piece. I mean, that's a big thing again that we're hearing. I mean, Peter was talking about the integration piece on on opening day here on our keynote, our, our opening segment, which was that path to digital business 
really has nothing to do with technology. And that was one of the questions I thought was, was awesome last night when you asked, you know, what do you worry about, the technology or something else? And everyone was like, I worry about something else, not so much the technology. Yeah, or at least they said it last night that they worry maybe 50% about the technology, but that it's moving up. They're increasingly worrying about the, the business objective that they're trying to serve and, and the people that they need to work with to serve that objective. So the integration becomes a, there's certainly, there's always going to be a technology component. But there also needs to be some policies, some governance. We have to take the business activities and the business insights and what the business needs and drive that into the different challenges or different approaches to thinking about integration. Uh, and that's more than just moving something over the wire. So as, again, as you think about the integration challenges, you know, it's moving from relational out. But are there some new things as people try to, you know, machine learning is clearly people are trying to turn it into a killer app. Uh, are we seeing some new integration challenges uh, beyond just moving the data around as we try to get at that application value? So I would say we are looking at the old integration challenges, and what I mean by old means not uh, old in the Hadoop space, but uh, in the uh, other enterprise technologies. Security, for example, governance is a big deal now, right? So security and governance, which people did not care about uh, in Hadoop uh, five years back, now they have become front and center, yeah. right? Because so, so the, the, those are one of the biggest integration challenges. It's not just moving the data around. I mean, moving the data is good. You have to move data at the low latency. You have to clean the data before moving, but again, that cleaning data has been there from last 20, 30 years. Nothing new about that. So that's an interesting signal then. So would you say then that that signal means that when you start getting those checkpoints, if you will, or but speed bumps, whatever you want to call it, means it's coming more into the enterprise radar because those are more more table stakes for the enterprise. Oh, I think that's exactly, uh, I think that's, ex I, I think it's Jerry Held talked about this last night. What have we learned from data warehousing that can now be applied to some of the things that we're doing with big data? And governance and those types of issues are really crucial. So how, how is that starting to factor in your customers' thinking? No, absolutely, you guys are right. So it has, so Hadoop has become, uh, rather than being siloed, it has become mainstream now. So uh, all the concerns, as I said, security and governance and other cross-cutting concerns, uh, which apply to every enterprise application, which have always applied to every enterprise application, but never applied to Hadoop because that was more of a, a siloed sideline project which people are doing, and now they are applying there. And at the same time, Hadoop itself is becoming less relevant because when you're connecting with the sources, okay, you want uh, to do stuff in real, uh, real time, then you need Kafka and Spark. Uh, you want to store data, yes, Hadoop is good to store the data, but uh, you know what, probably will go to the Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Azure or will go to S3. Right? So Spark has cut the head of uh, Hadoop and S3 and Azure, they have uh, cut the, uh, legs the, off. The, the legs off. So I mean, they, they, <laughs> there's nothing left except the name. Right? So let's talk about that because that is really a big statement because I mean, you've been invested in Spark early. So one, I want to get the update on Spark. Then I want to come back to talk about the leg, the leg chopping off aspect of the cloud. So first, give us the update on Spark because this is really a dynamic. You don't need to have Hadoop to run Spark. That's a, a misconception that IBM certainly cleared up this week. Um, so Spark, what's the update? So Spark streaming is becoming uh, uh, more and more uh, mainstream now. That's the, that is front and center. From last uh, one year, all the new business we are getting, that is about integrating with the real time or near real time, to be honest, uh, streaming sources. So and, and Spark uh, mostly because of Flink and uh, and the market push, uh, Spark has paid a lot of attention to streaming. So streaming has become really, really important there. So streaming at the same time, you still want to have access to the SQL sources, right? So SQL on Hadoop, uh, you don't even talk about it anymore because it's that's there. a given. You have to have it, With, yeah. uh, whether it's streaming or machine learning or everywhere else, that access from SQL has to be there. Yeah, and I validated that last night on a tweet. I threw out a tweet you know, out of our, out of our quick board on CrowdChat to some targeted people, and they came back absolutely unequivocally, SQL's not dying, going away. That's how you get attention, say something's going to be dead, then you get <laughs> 10 responses. But that's a good point, because it's back to the, um, the Hadoop getting kind of squeezed, if you will. So you mentioned the legs are being chopped up by some of the big guys like Azure and all this. What do, what do you mean by that? Is that the cloud storage and the cloud data stores are replacing Hadoop? I mean, take us through that. Yes, yeah, so Hadoop, the compute and uh, and the storage part, compute part, 
was taken away by uh, by Spark, right? So uh, the only part uh, part of the torso which is left is uh, the yarn piece, right? So yarn more of as a resource negotiator, uh, so uh, to to manage multiple uh, compute resources that has remained there. But storage, yes, you can use Hadoop for storage, but uh, the uh, the public cloud providers and, and their storage uh, technologies. Uh, um, and Microsoft is coming with... And the, the impact of Hadoop is what I'm trying to cut pieces together because I'm just trying to... I get Spark. I get what Spark's done. What's the other piece of it? Just the, the cloud guys? Is that what yeah, you're Yeah, cloud guys are doing the storage, right? So, I mean, so, I mean you don't need uh, SDFS for storage when cloud guys are already taking care of it, right? Microsoft is invested big time into, the, uh, into their uh, Microsoft uh, data lake solution which they're coming up with, right? S3 has been a standard for ages, right? So, so the visuals really, <laughs> it heads off and the legs are off, you got a torso. That's what you're basically. And the torso's yarn. Yes. Yeah, and, and that's, that's a really powerful way of describing it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, are we going to, so, so we, have, we have kind of metadata for the resource management and way of applying that metadata. What about some of the management or administration interfaces that are going to be necessary for, you know, the data officers, the CIOs who are responsible for knowing where the data is, who controls it. Is that also going to be, is that going to be more associated with Spark or how is that going to be incorporated into this whole integration challenge? Yeah, so the data management and the governance piece, I think that piece still needs a lot more work to be done there. Right. Cloudera has their navigator, uh, other uh, vendors also have their own tools. So, so that is the piece on which I think there will be a lot of work which is going to be done in the next one year. So right. the word Hadoop still means something. I want to get your thoughts. We're going to be at Hadoop Summit with uh, the Hortonworks show coming up. Also, we hear Strata at Hadoop World, which is the Cloudera show. Um, what's the future for these guys? I mean, you got Cloudera and Hortonworks. Where do they all fit in? How do you see that those guys uh, kind of settling in? Is there, I mean, Cloudera just got valuation clipped down by Fidelity Investments. So obviously they're, looking, they're not the, the billion dollar valuation anymore, so what's the take, and Hortonworks public, you see their numbers. What's, what's your take on the, the Cloudera versus Hadoop, I mean uh, Hortonworks? So what do they do, I mean that's. As Cloudera, I mean, they, they are good friends, and Cloudera, they have huge first mover advantage, and I think that's going to remain there. I think uh, uh, Hortonworks and MAPAR, they do not have uh, that advantage, uh, so it, it's going to be slightly more challenging for them. MAPAR is kind of moving away from uh, Hadoop. They are like, you know, we are more of a more data management platform. Uh, I think I heard somebody saying that compare us to Splunk as opposed to comparing us to Cloudera or. So or they're already kind of kind of seeing the positioning shift. They're jumping to mm -hmm. an, a, an area that's going to be safe for them. Yeah. And what is that? That's basically Hadoop plus something else. And. And we saw Hortonworks has the data platform and they have this new uh, emerging products group, which is, seems compelling to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you see they're making their moves basically. Yeah, so I mean, I haven't followed, followed uh, Hortonworks from last few months, but I think uh, the, the, the challenge with going too much open source is that then how do you make money? So I think Cloudera has been able to maintain a fine balance there. But I think, I think profitability is uh, still a challenge for, I think it's going to be remain challenge for all of these vendors, so. Yeah, nothing's ever free. That's what Jerry Held was saying, and that's the key. All right, your thoughts on, on the next step for you guys. What's going on with InfoObjects? Share with us some of the things you're working on um, in the business. Yeah, so I think for us, uh, uh, streaming is what we have been focusing on uh, uh, from last one year. I think streaming is going to remain a theme for 2016. Uh, as Intel comes up with this, uh, their 3D cross point uh, towards the end of the year, uh, I think uh, the whole non-volatile RAM, so, so uh, again, to, uh, first taking the hard disk was taken off, now I think once the 3D cross point comes, the flash will also be taken off, right? So it's just going to remain the memory chip and that's where the that's going to become the primary storage so in fact uh, if uh, three uh, things or uh, uh, three commandments i have for this year they are uh, streaming first approach streaming only approach and in memory storage right so uh, streaming first means that no matter what type of data you have that is going to be streamed first in streaming only approaches that you don't need uh, a Lambda architecture or anything. I mean, all the data will be streamed. First data is streamed, then you'll figure out what to do with it. And while you're figure, figuring, figuring out, uh, it doesn't have to go to Hadoop or anywhere else. The data will be stored in memory. Well, so, but there are still some limits to streaming. So as you think about what your clients are going to ask you to do with Spark, they're probably going to ask you to do things that Spark itself is not necessarily built for. How do you think you're going to end up adding value on top of that stack 
to our clients as they try to solve uh, challenges or applications that may require lower latency, uh, the ability to act on single events, uh, those types of things. What, what, what's the role of the services as we move this forward? It's got to be more than just implement Spark, right? Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, I mean, the first thing which when clients come to us is they say that we want to lower the latency. Right? At present, our latency is, say, three minutes, and we want to make it, say, 30 seconds or 10 seconds, right? And, and there, yes, yeah, Spark is one part of the play. I mean, data is coming from Kafka. Uh, all, all kind of disk I.O. we have to reduce there or almost make it zero. That's why it goes in memory. Yeah, so, so, so that's why it goes in memory. So, but you're right, so it's not about technology anymore, it's more about the use case, right? How can we, they can get the highest performance, highest throughput and lowest latency for their use case. And I think that's going to remain the theme. Vishy, a final question I have for you is I want to just take in um, a concept around New way versus old way. You mentioned a few things in the interview here around, you know, that's the old way of doing, uh, you know, uh, auditing and integration and, and, and you talk about streaming, um, Hadoop losing relevance in the sense of the overall big picture, but it, finding it's one spot, integration, machine learning and streaming, obviously key components you're obviously on Spark. You guys are in the front line. So I want to get the, your thoughts. As you talk to your customers and prospects, you have a lot of candid conversations around the big picture. What's the pattern? that you see, if you were a machine learning algorithm, what would you say is the pattern around what the new way is, what they want to do versus the old way? In other words, what are some of the old things that are going to be retrofitted or thrown away or replaced? And what are the new ways that they want to do business with big data? Can you share any uh, observations, anecdotes? Yeah, so I think one is that rather than technology-oriented approach, whether it's Kafka, Hadoop, or Spark, I think it's going to be more solution-oriented approach. This is what even InfoObjects is focusing on. Uh, for example, one of the verticals which we are going to focus this year big time on is manufacturing, right? So it's not that what Hadoop or Spark can do. It's like what InfoObjects can do for manufacturing industry, right? So I think that's, that, that's going to be the new way, that it's not about, okay, what a technology can do or, or what your throughput is going to be. That's all okay. But for a given business problem or for, or for a given industry, what we have done so far and what different things we can do. And what are some of the conversations around that thread? Is it uh, integration, you mentioned that? Is it the technology? Is it architecture? Where is the customer in, in the progress of that journey of figuring out these new solutions? Is it like a new conversation? What are some of the specific conversations? So it always starts with integration and it's going to end with uh, the predictive analytics and the predictive maintenance and those pieces, the machine learning piece. But we are still far from there because uh, I think for maybe at least next two to three years, it's going to about be about integrating with multiple sources. I mean, integration is a, uh, is a, is a big deal. I mean, when you have hundreds and yeah. thousands of sources. So. Well, we've been saying on theCUBE, the integration is the new barrier to entry for uh, young companies and certainly big companies to maintain relevance in their enterprises because that's now the glue. There's a lot of work being done there. So great observation. Richie, great stuff as always. Great to see you. Great, great perspective. It's like having an extra analyst on the set here. Appreciate it. You guys are doing a lot of great work. In fact, talking about streaming, we'll be streaming live at Hadoop Summit in Dublin next month. So I was going watch, keep, keep following theCUBE on Twitter at theCUBE. This is theCUBE, more live coverage here in Silicon Valley after this short break. <laughs>